In today's video on Black Clover Chapter 304, we'll be doing things a little bit different with the formatting of this video. And you'll see what I mean in just a few seconds, but if you're digging the new format and if you're just digging the Black Clover content on the channel in general, make sure you hit this video with a like and a comment to help with the algorithm and all of that. Also, while you're down there, you might as well just subscribe with the notifications on too. But without further ado, let's dive into this chapter. So this one opens up with a pretty sick looking panel. It's just the aftermath of the battle with Magicula. Everything's just kind of dissipating. Real spell and Magicula's curses and all that. And speaking of Magicula's curses dissipating, Lolo Pechica is actually freed from the, uh, the curse that she was put under. Like, both curses. The one where it was killing her originally, and also the curse of her being a, a devil? Which is a little bit weird because I thought that she was transformed into a devil, so I thought it was a little bit irreversible. Like, I always figured that she would come back to her senses and come back to the good side, but I just thought she'd be doing it as a, as a devil. But no, she's back to her normal self. Gotta love, by the way, when Lolo Pechica wakes up and Asta and her realize that, you know, She's wearing nothing. She bare buttoned it right now. This man instantly shoots his face up into the air because he don't want to look at her, dog. Because he still got them feelings for Sister Lily. He is extremely devoted to just one female, so you gotta respect it. He ain't finna get caught lacking out here, no sir. Woman in hand or not, he always gonna look away. But then in typical Sundere Shonen fashion, Noel comes in and uppercuts the hell out of Asta, knocking him away from Lolo Pechica. Like he done did anything wrong. Noel is absolutely on Sakura time here, by the way. This looks like it was straight up ripped out of Naruto. But then you got Noel aggressively hugging Lolo and Undyne trying to get in on the action too. It's just a happy moment. After that though, you got Asta charging back in on the scene like, what the fuck, why'd you hit me with that Shuryuki? And this scene right here is the perfect time for her to finally confess to Asta what she confessed to herself. But, um, she doesn't. She's too embarrassed to even look at him properly. And so she hits him with another Shuryuken, sending him flying. This scene, while it kinda makes sense just because you tell yourself that you're actually in love with this person, doesn't mean that you're ready to actually confess to them face to face that you are in love with them. It's just like, and part of me knew that this was kinda gonna happen, but the other part of me was like, fine. Finally, we're gonna get rid of the annoying tsundere aspect of her character, but no. Again, it makes sense, but I'm just a little bit like, eh, I wish we were past this point in Noelle's character. We also, in a way, kind of get the same thing with Nozelle, because after the whole Asta thing, Noelle looks at Nozelle and he just doesn't say anything. And then there's just a little bit of a brief moment of awkward silence, and then Noelle's like, hey, Big brother, you good? But he's thinking to himself, even though the curse has been lifted, I still can't speak to Noel properly, even now. But this to me, this scene right here, this moment where Noelle tells himself that he still can't talk to Noel properly, works more and better, in my opinion, than the whole Noel not confessing her love for Asta thing like face to face. And maybe it's because we don't see Nozelle as often. I don't know. It's a tad bit hypocritical for me to say that this scene works better than the other one because they are essentially like the same thing. Y'all really need to learn how to open up though. Anyways, right after that, we then get a real nice moment between Rill and Charlotte. They're talking as his spell is starting to dissipate. He apologizes that the spell is doing such a thing and then he thinks to himself, that he still couldn't achieve the ultimate picture. Charlotte then interrupts his thoughts by saying, what are you apologizing for, Rill? I was able to fight thanks to you, I'm grateful. Moreover, we can't die just yet right? Now, her words right here are extremely interesting to me, because even though Charlotte and Rill were fighting with all of their might and they were pouring their hearts out onto the battlefield, it never crossed my mind that they'd be injured to the point where Charlotte was actually wondering if they were going to die. It was just interesting. I didn't even consider the fact that these two were up on the table of death. But speaking of table of death, dog, gotcha. Golly. My man gets to look at Lolo Pechica and says, I'm glad you're safe, then just clack. He goes down. He once again starts feeling that giant hole in his stomach and the aftermath of using like all of his life energy. And the, uh, the priorly mentioned Rill and Charlotte then hit the ah! Too. Again, I've said this like three times already, but I never would have guessed that these two would be on the brink of death too. Lolo Pechica then tries to heal all three of them, but she realizes that her magic isn't strong enough to heal these wounds. Heal their wounds, I should say. Now I'm wondering, is this because her magic like in general isn't strong enough? So even if she was at like 100%, she still wouldn't be able to heal their wounds? Or is it because she is very sort of like worn out that she can't heal their wounds? 
Jesus. I'm interested to know. And while the gang is scrambling, trying to figure out what to do, how to save these three, uh, Noct comes up out of a shadow and he's like, there's nothing that can be done. They're doomed. They gonna die. They finna end right here, right now. Noct really be on ruthless mode 24-7. He's like, there ain't a damn thing you can do. We be the supreme devil, so that should be enough. If we have a couple casualties, eh, it is what it is. Golly. It makes total sense why he'd say this, though, considering his past with Morgan. He even sort of references that by saying the righteous are not always rewarded. That's reality. But then Noct kind of eats his words because I I'm guessing he just didn't know the strength of Mimosa's recovery magic. But like I said, this man just has to eat his words because Mimosa brings out the ultimate plant magic, Flower Princess's dream land and um saves gaja real in charlotte and not just right there looking at the spell like bro huh where was this when my brother needed saving after that though we do get a bit of um bit of a, a corny line in my opinion because when mimosa does what she does noelle then says reality can be turned into whatever we want because it's magic right yeah sure dog i mean black clover is a world where people can control light they can pass through shadows they can control time so it makes sense but you really just didn't need to say it it's one of those unspoken things after that though kind of abruptly we then get gaja confessing his love for lolo pachika he says i love you not as a queen but as a woman and everybody's just completely shocked and i i really really like gotcha's response he's like what i do did i say something wrong now before we get to the ending of this chapter an ending that got me hype as all get out because it's the return of you know a fight i just want to say this this chapter is a bit weird because the magicula fight was a fight that had and i don't think you can argue this point a lot of stakes and a lot of possible repercussions. And it feels like in, it's not even, it feels like every single one of those possible repercussions has been done away with in this chapter. Lolo being a devil forever and her being separated from Undyne forever, Gaja dying, Noelle finally confessing her love for Asta face to face. It's like Tabata set up all this stuff. And then in the end, he's just like, nah, I don't really wanna follow through with any of this, so we're just gonna hit the undo button. Don't misconstrue what I'm saying though. The way that everything went down in this chapter was not in a BS manner. Like it makes sense. I'm just not too thrilled with how everything turned out. It's all happy go lucky. Everyone go hold hands and run into the sunset. That's what this arc has low key kind of been. It's just been like setting up stakes and possible repercussions and then just doing away with them. And that's making it feel a little bit formulaic. But where I'm hoping that the formula switches up, where I'm wishing with all my heart, bro, is in this Xenon versus Yuno slash Longris fight. The reintroduction of this fight is the ending of the chapter, by the way, in case that wasn't already clear. But like I was saying, dog, I hope the formula switches up here. It needs to, in my opinion. Because if we just go through the motions of this fight, so we got Langris holding off Zenon, Yuno building up an attack, a Goku and Vegeta versus Kid Buu situation, only this time it's gonna take three minutes to build up power, and then when Yuno finally does build up power, he's gonna hit Zenon with an ultimate attack, ultimate magic, blah, 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 and then Zenon's just done. That absolutely cannot happen, and I hope, and I kind of have a feeling that it doesn't or that it won't because Xenon has been low-key built up to be like the most useful and the most dangerous member of the Dark Triad because think about what Xenon has done in comparison to the other members. I mean, Xenon slaughtered half of the Golden Dawn, kidnapped William and Yami, and is now proceeding to be the only member left alive. Granted, Dante did put in most of the work when it came to kidnapping Yami, but he couldn't finish the job. Zenon had to step in and do his damn thing. Punctured all type of holes in Yami, then took him into the portal. Also, if I'm not mistaken, he was the first member of the Dark Triad shown, right? Like, there was that page of Zenon standing around just a bunch of bodies, and you had Luck saying that this is the one dude that I don't want to fight. Bro, ain't nobody, ain't nobody been low-key built up in Black Clover like Zenon, and... At the same time, we know next to nothing about him. So for him to die in the next chapter would be an absolute waste. I like Yuno a lot, but don't sacrifice Zenon to give Yuno a great moment. 
But anyways, with that being the end of the chapter now, I think that's going to do it for this video. Right now, what I need you all to do is go to the comment section, and if you are for Xenon winning, I need you to write hashtag Team Xenon. If you're for Yuno winning and the story being formulaic, uh, write Team Yuno. But anyways, I already asked you guys to like, comment, and subscribe at the beginning of the video, so uh, hope you all enjoyed. If you did, good. See you all in the next one. Peace out.